so it's at Anchor Electronics today, and uh, the ladies handed over this meter to me to see if I could fix it, or at least check it out. Um, I've seen these in catalogs many, many times when I was younger, and they were really expensive, I remember. Could never imagine buying one. But I thought it was about this big. <laughs> and it's about this big. It's teeny tiny. This thing is teeny tiny. Um, so, had I known it had been so small, I might want, I might, better, might have been more tempted to get one. Um, but yeah, it is a model 461-2 digital multimeter. I've got the manual for it, printed it out. Uh, so, it's got volts, ohms, milliamps, AC, DC. Uh, it's not auto ranging, it looks like manual ranging. Uh, it has some weird pro it ha comes with the probes because the probes have to go way inside. Uh, and these are, it, this end is female, that end is male, so it's good that the probes are with it. Um, it is battery powered and you can charge it. Um, and I have the charger here. Um, I did plug the charger in and turn it on and it doesn't do anything at all. So it might need batteries to do anything at all. So I think we need to, we need to open it up, take a look at side. Okay, oh dear. Caution, uh, fuse ratings. Oh, it looks like it needs a really weird battery. Is that focusing? Uh, I'm not, I'm there we go. Hopefully that first part of the video wasn't blurred because I was on manual focus. Um, so, yeah, these are really weird batteries. Uh, nickel cadmium cells, part number, uh, they're really long. Really, really long. So it might not operate without batteries. And batteries might be a weird thing. I wonder how long are these batteries? Where are my, do I have any batteries on my desk? Uh, I don't see any. <coughs> might be, just be two back to back. Might be able to uh, just kind of fashion two together. We'll see about that. Let's see if this fuse is good. It looks good. Yeah, fuse is good. So, I'm going to assume this thing doesn't work without a battery in it. So how do you take it out of its case? It's not, not readily apparent. Maybe I just take these things off. There we go. Whoa, look at the shielding on that thing. Copper, copper. Copper, copper everywhere. Hmm, interesting. It's kind of a, a U-shaped design. It's kind of hard to work on. Hmm. Maybe we can hotwire it figure out what the voltages are here. Might be able to just hotwire the battery. The uh, charge circuit might just be something that sends a very small current into the batteries but won't actually power up the device. Um, yeah, zoom back out again, sorry. Huh. Now I don't know if it's split. It might be plus or minus. And I don't know what's going on. Let me check the schematic out here. See if we get some quick information from the schematic. So, like where's my magnifying glass? 
plus 5 and minus 8. How do they get those voltages? Battery board. Is there a schematic for the battery board? Oh, wait a minute. Yeah, this is, maybe this is something here. This is the... Uh, here's the battery board. Four times 2.25 NICADs, plus minus, plus source, five volts power, five source, charger jack, seven and a half volts DC goes through a 20 ohm resistor into the battery. The battery then goes into the rest of the circuit. Hmm. All right. Interesting. Oh, here. Okay, these are shorted together, so plus is over here. So this is plus and this is minus. Okay, let's get a power supply here. Five volts. Here is our plus, and here is our minus. And here is our power. Oh, it lives. It lives. Okay. Well, that's good news. So, I say that we figure out how to make it run on the power supply. What is this? This says it's output 7.5 volts DC, 100 milliamps. And I'm drawing, I'm drawing, um, can you, where, where's my, where's my, where's my power supply? There it is. Uh, we're drawing 1.3 amps, so the this little wall wart won't won't supply that much. So we will have to somehow uh, make this available for a DC supply somehow, or try to put some batteries in it. I think we just maybe have two batteries. Maybe heat shrink together? Something like that? I don't know. Give it a try. All right. Um, so we have uh, a little success turning it on, but it doesn't do anything. It doesn't measure voltage right and everything. So there's something else going on inside, but the, we do have some flashy lights. Um, so this comes out as a module, and I thought, oh dear, it's going to be hard to work on. But as it turns out, these shields here, I thought they were they were soldered on. And as it turns out, um, they are actually on sockets. There's two pins and then there's pins in the board. So the, this, this one comes out. Um, and this one comes out. There's a nice mark here on the board. I'll show you a close up. It's uh, Wisconsin, which is where Simpson Electronics started. A uh, very, very old company. Uh, 1930s. Um, all right, so now we have this thing. PC boards kind of sandwiched together. And as it turns out, uh, this board is soldered to this board. So this board... <laughs>
There we go. Oh, there. So this, the two boards comes apart, come apart. So there is a connector in the back and a connector here. So those boards go together. And then there's one last connection, which is these three connections here. And there's a funny little connector here on this board. So that's how everything connects together. All right, so let's take a take kind of a close, close look at this thing. Uh, this is where the probes attach. So they come in here and there's a bunch of switches. So there's a bunch of resistor dividers and stuff that's on here. Uh, there's a big fuse for the current. Um, let's see, what's the maximum current on this thing? Uh, millivolts, my, uh, max. I'm not quite sure. I'll have to read the data sheet. Um, and, uh, so the battery attaches here somehow. So there's not much on this card, uh, mostly just resistors. Uh, most of the circuitry is on this card. And, uh, this is a very familiar chip. This is a, uh, an ICL 7107 CPL. So it's basically a voltage in display out. So it's a voltage that'll that give you zero to or plus or minus one nine nine nine. And uh, that's what this chip does. So the rest of the chip is just massaging the data into a two volt range. Uh, once you have a two volt range, then you can put it on the front panel. So that's what this big chip does here. It looks as though that chip is working, uh, but these chips are easy to find. That would have been easy to fix. There's only one op amp in the whole thing, a 365, an LM360, 356, I'm sorry, LM356, that's down here. Um, and I think, if I was a betting man, um, I'd be worried about this particular chip. Maybe not the chip itself, but how it's used, okay? Uh, so let me show you that in the uh, schematic here, if I can show you that. Anyway, as we know, there's five volts coming into the part, and that, that Aztec module is a DC to DC converter. It uh, outputs... Uh, plus 12 and minus eight. Okay, so five volts in, 12 volts out, and minus eight volts out. And so it's a bunch of uh, switch capacitors, I think. Anyway, there's some capacitors here. And those capacitors, whoa, those capacitors down here are dipped tantalums, which are known to sometimes go bad. Um, so what I need to do is figure out if we really do have plus 12 and minus eight and uh, like I said, if I was a betting man, I'd say one of those capacitors has gone bad and hopefully has not, not destroyed the module. But uh, yeah, now I need to figure out how do I power it up in this state. So I think I can just find out where plus five comes into this board and just hot wire that in. And then uh, we can go to the pins of this... Uh, of this chip right here and uh, measure the output. So uh, that chip only has four pins. No, one, two, three, four, is that all? One, two, three, yeah, it's a four pin chip. Wow, I guess I could hot wire right into here. This, this obviously, let's see, one is ground. So that's five volts. Let's see here, one, is ground, two is plus 12, three is minus eight, and this one is plus five. So plus five comes in here, and that goes to this capacitor. That's this 100 microfarad capacitor right here. Uh, he might be dead as well. Um, and then there's a trace, I think, that goes all the way around the board up to front. Hmm. Anyway, I should be able to hack into it and uh, put five volts on it. 
Okay, so I've added some test loops here. Let me hook up a voltmeter to this one. Here I have plus five volts, so I can hook up grounds. All right, so if I put in plus five, and then I can measure the other two pins, I get minus eight, minus 7.993, and shoot. 11.98, so that chip is working just fine. Those capacitors are working just fine. So uh, five volts going in, so shoot. I was hoping that was it, because that would have been an easy fix, but that's not it. We'll have to dig around some more.